Tiger snakes are one of the top five most poisonous snakes on earth. And to most Australians, they're just another deadly snake. But the tiger snake really is something special. And Rob Breddle tells us why. Rob Breddle has lived with snakes all his life. He looks at them no differently to any other animal. He thinks all you have to do to live with them is to get to know them. To most people, a snake is a long, thin creature, slimy, poisonous, crawls through the grass, and it just wants to bite people. The long and slender bit, that's true. But if they were put here just to bite people, they would all be the size of large anacondas. If I were a snake, I would be able to, without arms or legs, wriggle up this watermelon and swallow it whole. But I can't. I'm not a snake. How can they do this? Firstly, their skin can stretch to as thin as glad wrap. Now I've come here to the Queensland Museum to show you the skull of a snake. Now unlike us, most of the bones in the head of a snake are not fused together like us. So they can actually stretch apart and this allows the snake to consume animals much larger than their head. Now their teeth are needle sharp and they all face back to grip their prey and they can have more than a hundred of them. They can have from three to four hundred vertebrae with a set of ribs attached to each. Their skin is covered in scales which keeps in moisture, reflects and absorbs heat and their internal organs to fit in are stretched out and they're just identical to ours. They have a lung, a heart, a liver, kidneys. If you do live in an area with a lot of snakes and they worry you, there is a simple way to identify a venomous from a non-venomous snake and I'll show it to you. All pythons have narrow belly scales. If you look on his belly you'll notice they're only about that wide. And only pythons have narrow belly scales. No other snake has it. All tree snakes are long and thin and they have a large scale that looks like a fingernail that runs down the centre of their back, right down the middle of their back there. Now the venomous snakes, their belly scales go right across the snake and they have large uniform scales across their back, all the same size. And I might just add, if you're going to do this, do it with a dead snake, one you found run over on the road preferably. Australia is the land of the poisonous snake. Interestingly, they have all probably evolved from a single species that drifted here from Asia some 15 million years ago. Now the tough conditions here created tough snakes. We have more species of venomous snake than anywhere else. When Australia finally drifted up from Gondwana land around 50 million years ago, it was the beginning of a unique and lonely voyage. For perhaps 20 million years, it remained isolated and free from intrusion. This drifting landmass became a kind of laboratory experimenting in evolution, where life forms quite different from the rest of the world roamed. Then, around 20 million years ago, things began to change. Australia bumped into the Asian landmass. Now a small wave of new animal species began filtering down. They arrived to find a very different land full of strange plants and animals. Many perished, but a few survived, including a handful of snakes. Snakes are well equipped to be migrants. They float, have waterproof skins, and can do without food and water for long periods. Once on land, all they need to do is eat what comes along. Just like this snake here, floating in on a piece of driftwood, many families of snakes would have made their way to Australia from Asia, possibly 
flushed out of some prehistoric river by some great flood. Of the snakes to successfully colonise the northern Australian shores so long ago, only one was poisonous. It enjoyed the tough new conditions and by changing over time, spread and adapted to every part of this new homeland. Today, Australia has more types of poisonous snakes than any other country. But this is not the end of the story, because even as I speak, off the southern coast of Australia, the common tiger snakes are rapidly spawning new species. These are what we call the island tigers. Island tiger snakes are snakes with a difference. They're found on a number of small islands off Australia's southern coastline. These castaways have been stranded here since the finish of the last ice age. Here they make a good living, and they do it in a quite unexpected way. But their story starts on the mainland with one of Australia's most familiar snakes, the common tiger snake. To look at, a tiger snake is just another average Australian snake. Sure, they're one of the most deadly, and they have killed a lot of people, but then so have a lot of other snakes. They come in a wide range of colours, they have live young, but then so do a lot of other snakes. I suppose the most amazing thing is this, the way those characteristics have combined so this snake can survive where no other can. Now, one other thing, they are not fussy eaters. They will eat anything that moves. And that's why I'm standing very still. Yeah, common tiger snake. Yeah, there's nothing very common about the story this fella has to tell. Beauty. Rob Breddle is searching in the wetland home of the tiger snake in southern Australia. Now that was a bloody tiger snake. Bit too warm, eh? Common tiger snakes are frog eaters and love the swamps. They thrive in these cool, wet areas and best time to see them is early morning. Oops. It's then they come out of That's the reeds to warm in the sun. When you look at this amazing snake, you just have to wonder why. It does just as well on a cold, waterless island as it does on the edge of this freshwater swamp. Or even why it has such deadly venom. It's in fact the fourth most deadly snake in the world. Common tiger snakes are widespread over southeastern Australia and are found where there are frogs. They do best along the river systems and adjacent swamps in conditions most other snakes avoid. The trademark stripes sometimes give way to plain brown or black. This colour variation is very important. It helps them to penetrate colder regions totally unsuitable for most other snake species. Weeks have passed since the hot, dry summer of southern Australia has replaced the cold and wet winter. Streams and swamps are full, and the tiger snakes are active. While snakes need the sun to increase their body temperature, they can choose what temperature they need for a particular activity. The choice at this time of the year is to allow their bodies to warm to around 30 degrees. At this temperature, the tiger snake is ready to hunt and eat. By now, frogs also have taken advantage of the warmth and water and are breeding prolifically. They're easy prey compared with rats, mice, birds and other reptiles that frequent the swamp. The tiger snake smells the frog by tasting the air and ground with its tongue. This is what the tiger snake has been hunting for millions of years. 
Its calm, unwavering pursuit oozes confidence. There have always been plenty of frogs, and they're less dangerous to catch than rats and mice. The common tiger snake might prefer frogs, but it's not fussy. If something like a mouse or lizard comes along, it'll eat that too. Easy-going tiger snakes don't go hungry too often. Tiger snakes mate for most of the year if the conditions are warm enough. They give birth to fully developed young instead of laying eggs. The male tries to pin down the female to stop her from moving and persuade her to mate with him. It's the smell of the female rather than her action that triggers the male's enthusiasm. The ritual can go on intermittently for days. She may mate several times with different partners over a period of months, but she ovulates only once each year, and this is always in spring. It's late summer, and a female tiger snake, cobra-like, spreads and flattens her body to absorb the sun's warmth. The heat of the sun is critical to the development of her soon-to-be-born young. Most of southern Australia is parched and dry by now. Rivers and swamps are low, and the annual frog feast is not long to run. It's as if the Corellas are giving harsh warnings that the cold, wet months of winter are near. The closer to winter the young are born, the less chance there is for survival. Sometime later, on this summer day, the female tiger snake looks for shelter. She's going to give birth. Most Australian snakes are egg layers, but live birthing has special advantages for the tiger snake. It allows the young to survive the cold and occasional flooding of their watery habitat. This is the one feature that allows the tiger snakes to thrive in the cold swamps. As soon as they're born, they scatter to hide and to hunt. While the young are drown-proof and endure the winter cold, their chances of survival are still remote. They're prey for just about everything that lives in and around the waterways. The mammal's lengthy nurturing period for their young doesn't work for snakes. What does is the production of masses of fully functioning miniatures scattering and ready to fend for themselves. They're equipped with all they need to survive from the moment they're born. Survival means keeping away from everything, even their brothers and sisters. When two babies randomly cross paths, pure instinct triggers an instant reaction. Because snakes are immune to their own venom, the only way this baby can win is by holding on for dear life to stop the other breathing. Success is unlikely. Baby tigers love to eat baby frogs, but the right-sized skinks will do just as well. By this time of the season, there are plenty about, and they often hide in the same places as baby tiger snakes. By luck, more than by good management, a young snake has its first and most important meal. As winter approaches, at least one of this latest generation of common tiger snakes has improved its prospects. For another though, its luck is about to run out. While skinks are good baby food, the small frogs in the swamps remain as their major food supply. And where there are small frogs, there are big frogs. <laughs> Thank you.
Now, the tiger snake's main meal becomes a lethal threat as the prey turns predator. The green and golden bell frog seizes the opportunity. 